Welcome to Home Gym History. My name is Rob, and you can find me on Vintage Weights PGH, but right now, you found Jed Johnson, otherwise known as Napalm, the national yeah, grip champion. Here he is, North American grip champion, I think, world champion, probably intergalactic grip champion <laughs> at this point. So, yeah. yeah, for listeners that don't know, tell us a little bit about yourself, brother. Yeah, um, appreciate it. I enjoy the opportunity. I want to say also thank you for, I noticed you've left some comments on my YouTube lately. That's much appreciated. That helps out the channel quite a bit. Um, I, uh, I, I'm a multi-time national champion. However, I did not win last year. That was Jason Dingy that took the title and the belt. So uh, I can't claim that right now, but we Team will have point. a show. Yes, we will. Yep, that's exactly right. Uh, and we will have a showdown for that title on June 10th. So that's my main initiative right now in my training is getting that title back. Nice. You know, it's a like a classic, uh, you know, 1980s type of movie scenario. You're fighting for the title to bring it back. Yeah, yeah I, I like put it. up a video or several videos actually on belt squats mm -hmm. where I was training belt squats and uh, Jason put up a post shortly after that saying <laughs> napalms talking about belt squats, but this is the only belt that matters. And he's got uh, his feet up uh, on the couch and he's sitting there like eating popcorn with the <laughs> belt on the other side of the, <laughs> the love seat. So, well, if any of this has confused you listeners, Worry not, because here's what we're going to cover tonight. We're going to get into how Jed got into grip strength and grip strength training and competitive grip strength. We'll dive. I mean, this is home gym history. So we're going to get into feats of strength with some historical context, old time strongman type of stuff. And then, like uh, Jed was just talking about with the nationals coming up, there's a lot of modern history when it comes to grip organizations and official competitions, things like that, that have just come about in the last, you know, 30 ish years or less. And then even though I covered the history of blobs and I got heavy into Richard Soren on episode five, which by the way, if you haven't listened to that and you enjoy this episode, go back and listen to episode five, where I covered a history of blobs. I'll probably still ask Jed some questions about blob lifting because I really enjoy his book, Lift the Blob. I'm still working at it and still employing a lot of the uh, things that I learned in your book. So it's going well. I'm making progress. I'm climbing the ladder. I'm just turning the quarter on maybe an 85, half an 85, and I'm starting to get comfortable with uh, an 80 pounder. So things cool. are going well. I like it. But as far as grip is concerned, I thought it'd be good because I have listeners that do, you know, any type of lifting, maybe strongman, you know, powerlifting, CrossFit, you name it, to just kind of start out by going through, in your opinion, since you're an expert at grip, why should you train grip for each of these disciplines, if you wouldn't mind, mind yeah. uh, given your opinion? It's, it's important to do at least some kind of grip training because not, and you don't necessarily have to train for what I do, like competitions. That's not the best way to do it uh but it it's gonna be very important to have very strong hands and wrists so not only you can pick the bar up but also keep it in the track that you need it to so if if your hands are strong enough to make that bar do whatever you want it to on the bench press you're gonna be way more confident and be able to handle more weights uh, your wrists won't buckle underneath the weight. Same with the squat. I mean, you've got to be able to clench that bar very hard and keep it right where you want to. And if it always, if it always feels like you're going to lose grip on the bar or it's shifting on you or something like that, that's going to get in your head. And you don't want any other distractions when you're going through, going for a, a PR squat, PR bench. You know, you don't want to be thinking about all that. You want to be thinking about, more important stuff so yeah uh, power lifting it's huge strongman, strongman. absolutely um, not so much with like olympic lifting i mean you don't want to have weak hands but you have the advantage of using the hook grip in sure. olympic lifting so i'm i'm sure there's a at least a bare minimum of of grip strength that you need 
Uh, and I, mean, I did your that background. For, you have yeah. experience in all the things you've named, which I think yes. is pretty cool. Yes, my 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 strength career started out with uh, just bodybuilding, but then I found out about. It's not like I found out about powerlifting. I I knew it. I knew it existed, but we found out about West Side methods oh, there you and go. adding bands and chains to the bar. Mm -hmm. So we started doing that for a while, but I was always. Uh, really interested in strongman, you know, for years. I remember watching that when I was in like middle school when it was yeah. on ESPN and that was always cool. So I liked uh, to do like standing presses and it just so happened in 2002, we befriended a guy named uh, CJ Murphy on the drsquat.com forum. Okay. And uh, he runs a gym called Total Performance Sports in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and he promotes strongman contests. And he was he was you know putting marketing information up on that forum, and we had become you know pretty good friends with him through interactions on the forum. And we decided to sign up for that contest in two thousand three. Mm -hmm. So, um. You know, so I have a I have a pretty decent amount of experience with strongman. Injuries took me out of it. My, you know, I just You're back right. Uh, yeah, yeah. A a lot of it has to do with my lack of education and awareness around proper recovery. Um, I didn't really care what positions I put myself in, so I would often strain my back. And I had a very sedentary job, so mm. I sat on my butt most of the day pretty much every day so my hips got very tight um and it, and it caused issues so it, it just the lifestyle just didn't mesh with strongman training and in 2006 i had a pretty significant injury so i was like eh, i don't think i'm gonna do this anymore i i continued doing like the log which i loved mm -hmm. um all the overhead presses uh, the, the stones, tire flipping and stuff like that. I did, I still continued to do that training for quite a while. Um, but I, I just didn't sign up for any more competitions, but in between the power lifting and the strong man, I started doing about a year, about a year or so of dedicated, uh, Olympic weightlifting. Okay. So clean and jerk and snatch. And I, I really enjoyed that. So I would do, if I remember correctly, it was like we would clean and jerk on Saturday mm. at a at a gym that was like an hour away from my house. And then on Sunday, we'd go back up and do snatches. It was just the only gym anywhere nearby us that had bumper weights. Okay. So, and I was, I was pretty good at it. Not, I, not great, but you know, I was just passionate about it. Well, and it was 2000. Three, sorry to cut you off there, but no 2003 when you did the strongman, that was around the same time you got into grip competition, right? Yeah, I I actually there was a contest announced, a grip contest announced on that same Doctor Squat forum. Okay. The the strongman contest was in August of 2003, and the grip contest was in September of 2003. So. <laughs> Um, by then I had found out about grippers and I had dabbled in card tearing and stuff like that. I was, I used to, dude, I used to carry around a picture of Vasily Alexiev uh -huh. and a picture of John Brookfield in my wallet. Like, uh, uh those guys were top two. Yeah. 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 I have a mastery of hand strength sitting next to me. Some of my research for tonight came from there. And yep. uh, that's by John Brookfield. And then yep. I was just my one of my last episodes with Matt Wenning. We were talking about uh, Alexia and Matt Wenning is actually I mean, one of the incredible like, three dudes that I follow. Oh, yeah. Uh, this day and age. Like he's my, so currently. intelligent. I yeah. Mean, yeah. He's my kind of guy, too. He doesn't he doesn't take any bull from the people. It's like, yeah. you know, I, I just like. I just like his attitude, the way he goes about things. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I really, uh, from my perspective, just his historical knowledge really hit home. I mean, there's, oh, yeah. there's a, any number of people that can uh, lift heavy weights. Now, I mean, not everyone could do what he did, breaking all-time records and things. But I just mean there's a lot of strong people, but it's harder to find strong people that also have a strong knowledge yes. of the historical yes. precedent. And that's mm -hmm. why I'm thrilled to have you on, because you've got mm – -hmm. One heck of a historical knowledge. So 
what I want to do here, Jed, is I, I tried out a segment recently called Have You Ever? And this isn't like, you know, we're not getting anything too radical or something that's going to shame you too much. It's more okay. just feats of strength. So you already mm -hmm. named one. I crossed it off my list. You have torn a pack of cards. Yes. And what I did was I went through uh, Brookfield's book. I went through, uh, what else I got over here? Brooks Cubic, Dinosaur Training, had some yep. cool stuff. I went just all over the place. And I compiled a list of feats of strength that might involve grip. And I'm going to mm -hmm. run them by you. Sure. So here we go. Uh, have you ever done a one-handed deadlift? Yes. Two, 275 or 295. No hook nice. grip. But that's probably been since 2004 since I've done that. Okay. How about a one finger deadlift? Absolutely not. No. Nope. I and Pretty I dangerous. try to get people it's not worth the risk. It's not worth the risk. And old time strongmen, they used to do this kind of one finger stuff. And when I was reading about it, that's the first thing every modern kind of person writing about it said was this is extremely dangerous. You're gonna yes. tear ligaments, tendons, things. Um, I've done I've had those Gordon. injuries. I've had those injuries before, and it's it's really not worth it supposedly Herman Gorner one-handed the deadlifted over 700 pounds, which is pretty ridiculous to someone like myself that doesn't deadlift 700 pounds with two full hands. How about, let's see here. You tore a pack of cards, you said, but yep. uh, how about torn a pack of poker cards in half using only your index finger and thumb of each hand? No, I don't think I ever really got into any of those types of variety of tearing, mainly gotcha. just the full hand. Um, I, I've done like vertical tears. So you tear okay. the length of the cards and I've torn the corner of mm. the cards and I've torn a chunk out of the center. Um, a chunk but, out of the center. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> think, and wild. honestly, I, I wrote a ebook on card tearing mm -hmm. and I think I only did those feats so I could have the picture of the, <laughs> of the tear. So it wasn't like I did it in 10 seconds by any yeah. means, but yeah. it, it, but I didn't brace it. So I had it free and, it, you know, I just, I struggled with it, but, you know, I was able to do it. It's funny you mentioned the time because where I got that from was a French strongman, and I might be pronouncing it wrong, but Bata, B-A-T-T-A. -T -T he used to do this and he'd do it within a minute. He'd rip a deck of cards. Uh, how about a phone book? That's a classic yeah. one. Rip yep. the phone yep. book. Uh, bent a horseshoe. Yep. Bent a horseshoe. And, yes. uh, oh, this one, I'm not good at horseshoes. I just want you to know I'm not good yeah. at horseshoes, but I have a, a DVD on that as well. And what I did is I partnered up with one of my good friends, Mike Rinderly, back in like okay. 2011, 2012. And he was the master. He was like one of the top 10 dudes back when that was really, really popular. I, I mean, all these things I find fascinating because it's turn, it, they came about during the time and era where there wasn't organized competition and it was more of a performance. You know, yeah. These men were standing up there and women. There's some, you know, acts of women doing things um, and doing things that I talked about this in a couple episodes with the history of strongman with the Kurt Locker on here about how the whole objective was something familiar to the audience that they would know would be hard to do. You know, yeah. if you grab something that's not familiar, it's not really that impressive, but a horseshoe right. to a bunch of farmers, holy crap, that's yeah. a spectacle. So yeah. how about uh, a heavy barrel overhead? Apparently, I've George done, I've done, said that was yep. tough. I've done kegs, kegs, kegs yeah. filled with water, kegs with like some solids and water. Not sure how much the weight was. None okay. of the strongman contests I ever did uh, required a press of okay. a keg. It was more like a carry, like a bear hug carry or a yeah, shoulder yeah, carry. Yeah. But I, I mean, I don't know. I have a keg pounds. with water in it in my shed and I'll do stuff with it but so i didn't understand at first why that was grip strength but george jowett who he has well, a patent for a first adjustable dumbbell all kinds of stuff he said the yeah. rims right yeah the, if you have the older style keg where the mm -hmm. the rim on the edge is thick so not yeah. the perfectly cylinder ones but the one that's shaped like a like a football kind of sure yeah so when you pick that up you're clamping it like this uh, so when you press that, that water is dynamic. So you've got to control it. It's that's really hard. Um, sloshing around. Generally, what people do is they'll offset. So they'll take a grip on the bottom and take a grip on the top, and then that way the water kind of settles and it's much easier. Much easier. You, you could double or even triple your reps that way. 
that's what uh, Brooks Kubik advises in dinosaur training to do the offset. <laughs> so I skipped the bending one and then there's only a couple more. So okay. have you ever, this is one that fascinated me. Have you ever bent a coin? That apparently no. is like an old time thing. No, that's, uh, it's funny. That just came up on my YouTube comment section today uh, talking about stainless steel. Um, okay. He's the only guy I know of that's ever bent a coin barehanded. Uh, well, and I don't know if Chris Ryder has or not. Um, I think he usually wraps it, mm. which, I mean, bendings, something like that, barehanded is in the same vein as one one finger deadlifts, just yeah. very, very risky. So well, I don't I don't think it matters if you wrap it. So John Brookfield's book, Master of Hand Strength, kicked off on it. And then I jumped online to do some more kind of looking into it but apparently where it started was in europe and a lot of the european coins english pennies are like the size of a half dollar basically yeah of u.s currency yeah. so it's bigger you can get a better grip and back when this was going on 150 years ago they're very brittle compared to today so yeah you know, it's not exactly the same as grabbing one with abe lincoln on it and trying to bet right. I think there was a guy named uh, Scott St. Vincent that used that was bending quarters for a while. Whoa, I can't imagine. Yeah, very, <laughs> I mean, very intense. All right, how about crushing? Crush the raw potato with one hand. I don't think I've ever even tried that. That okay. That just seemed like I, I'm not an unnecessary risk, risk guy, man. I've been hurt too much. Yeah. <laughs> I've been hurt so, too much. Safe to assume you've also not crushed a walnut or an apple. No, I've done walnuts. Walnuts. Oh, there you go. I got one. Well, about about twenty five percent of the bag is like pretty easy. Okay. Yeah. So you can kind of game that one. Uh, yeah. Have you ever squeezed a tennis ball until it exploded? Squeezed a pop or beer can until it exploded? Squeeze something to make it explode. Not a not a tennis ball. Um, okay. I with two hands and gloves on. Yeah. I've done either beer or soda cans. I, I can't remember. It was, I shot like a DVD with a dude so long ago, dude. I, I think his <laughs> name was Phil. Okay. And uh, we did that at the end and it was tough. It was tough, but you know, it wasn't super hard. I know that beer cans are easier than soda cans. Like the metal is a little bit lighter, a little bit weaker. Uh -huh. Um, so you can do it a little bit better. And of course that was long before all these fruity drinks, white claw and all this yeah, stuff, yeah. which those hand, those cans, like a red bull, you know, yeah. because they're narrower, they might be even easier, but I'm not sure. You can train with those, but it makes sense. Like you're going to cut your hands, you know, poking through there. So, yeah. you know, some of the classic, uh, feats of strength, Thomas inch dumbbell, and plate pinching, things like that, you've definitely conquered. And I know that, and I have specific questions for those. But before we move on, you know, for people at home getting curious about all these things, how'd you learn to do these feats of strength? Well, I, I, I found out about it from a guy named Rick Walker on the Dr. Squat Forum. He's the guy that ran that first grip contest. And this guy posted like more passionately about grip than anybody that I've ever encountered. So it was like, I was feeding off that intensity. And so he was posting, he did 245. So, you know, I trained for it. Uh, I didn't, I didn't accomplish it right away. I, I got it in like August of 2004. So it took me like a year and a half, two years. It wasn't dedicated training by any means, but um, it took a while for me to figure out how to chalk things. And once okay. I figured out how to chalk things properly, then some of that stuff became a little bit easier. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah. Two two thirty fives I got pretty quick, and uh, two all that stuff. You just froze a little bit there, but I think I got it came through. So okay. two thirty fives you got pretty quickly. Yep. And you know that for the home gym listener that is tuning it in. They probably That's, don't even have 35s. <laughs> yeah, I, well, but I mean, what I was going to say was, you're correct, 35s has gotten a bad rap recently. I love 35s. I have plenty. But I, I was going to say it's a very accessible grip feat of strength. You can yeah. get some 10-pound plates and start working on it. And you've done, I think, more 10-pound plates than anyone, right? Six in one hand? So there's been there's been 
I'm going to say like 10, 12 people that have done six tens. Okay. I'm the only person I know of that's done six tens in each hand at the same time. Oh, uh, okay. I first did six tens back in like 04. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Um, and then I, oh, I, I knew that I could do them in each hand separately because yeah. I've, I've gone back and forth and I've handed them off, mm-hmm. but I had never taken the time to try six tens. So I, or in each hand. So I just lined them up and I gave them a squeeze the first time they came off. And then I just kind of rechalked and took a little break and, and got it. it. It wasn't, it's not that hard at this point. Well, my hands are huge that, though. You got to understand that my hands are enormous. Especially your thumb. Yes. That, yes. That, that's a good uh, point to interject one of my, uh, one of my questions from a listener. You're the first guest I've ever done this. I've never announced beforehand, like, hey, I'm recording with so-and-so. Anyone have any questions? Okay. So to loop back to Jason, Jason, sorry, I mispronounced his name. To loop back to Jason Denji, who yeah. is the reigning national champion that you're trying to take it back from. Think of it as interim champion. Nice. I like interim. it. Well, this, this is a two-part question that comes from Mike at SAF73 on oh, God. Instagram. So, <laughs> who, first question, who's prettier, yourself or Jason? Jason's got me on that one. All right. Second question, and this is what made me think of it, was you have an enormous set of thumbs. So who would win at thumb wrestling, you or Jason? I've never been beaten. Oh, I've, I've never in my life been beaten going all the way back to elementary school, undefeated, lifetime. There was zero hesitation on that answer. No, that was, <laughs> I'm still waiting for someone to step up to the challenge. They just, they can't handle the truth. That, you know what? That reminds me of when I had Ed Cohen on here, I asked him, hey, is there anyone today that if they were lifting at the time you were lifting at your peak would be able to do this? And I mean, he didn't even hesitate. He said, no. And so that's what it reminds me of. No hesitation. No one's ever beaten you. So from course. what I understand, he's got a, a mean set of hands, like really yeah. big hands for his size. I've never met him. I, on Instagram, he's Team Fairpoint, and I follow him. And I, I'm entertained by what I see him doing. He lifts, you know, inch dumbbells and various things. So that's a good point to get back into your history of things and just the history of some of these grip feats so one of the most classic in my opinion is the thomas inch dumbbell Mm -hmm. and i briefly kind of covered it in a previous episode but can you kind of fill in the listeners a little bit about thomas inch the dumbbell what makes it particularly difficult to lift why is it such a feat of strength yes uh okay so thomas inch was a traveling performing strongman in i would say like the late 1800s maybe early 1900s, something along those lines. And I'm going to say he's from the UK because as intelligent, I think I am. I don't know whether he was from England, Ireland, Scotland. I don't know what country he was actually from. So the last time I did a a We might both be wrong, but I think England. I'll check after we record. We'll see. (laughs) The last time I did a video on this, I said, I said, Europe. Europe. So So at least you're- I got razzed in the comments section. So, but um, he, he created a series of dumbbells. It was either like four or five dumbbells. Mm -hmm. All of them had a very thick handle because back in the day, from what I understand, the steel, the iron or whatever was softer. So you had for, for a dumbbell of these sizes, you would need a handle that was larger or else if you dropped it, it would, it would run a chance of breaking. So they had a series of dumbbells. One of them was a 172 or 73 pound dumbbell. And the handle is, was roughly two and three eighths, 2.5 inches and uh, weighing 172. It had the globe heads on it. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's so hard, 172 pounds isn't necessarily that hard to pick up, but the fact that the handle is so large and the fact that it's all one piece and the globes are much wider Then the handle. So you get a lot of momentum as you pick it up. It wants to turn Mm. towards the weakest point of your hand, which is generally the space between your thumb. So it defeats your thumb. It rolls out of your fingers and you might crack it off the ground uh, like a sheet of paper with. But that's about it for most people. For Actually, for most people, it just spins. Yeah. Um, But generally, once it leaves the ground, it just it just rips right out of your hand. Well, I mean, I owe you a, a 
a debt of gratitude a little bit here that I don't know if you know this, but Chaz, who is Stranger Grip on Instagram, he and I managed to pick up off the used market two Thomas Inch replicas and no markings on them or anything. But then whenever I went out to his place to pick up mine, he kept one and I took one home. Uh, he said, oh, hey, I reached out to Jed and he's pretty sure it's an iron mine replica because of this and this and this. So thank you very much for helping to uh, identify what I got sitting in my gym here. Yeah, no problem. And I'll tell you, the, the iron mine inch dumbbell that I have is the hardest one that I own. So I, yeah. I have here in my gym, I have a Sornex, then I got an iron mind, then Luke got a Selene inch. And then we ended up with another Slaney inch. So we have four of them here. And the Iron Mind by far is more difficult because the handle is so much smoother and it doesn't, doesn't take chalk very well. Okay. And it's also got the thickest handle. So I was surprised when I measured it. Chaz told me that. And yeah, it's, it's over uh, 2.5. So yeah. I, yeah. I thought to myself, geez, I'm not even up to lifting an inch replica and somehow I ended up finding the hardest one but yeah. <laughs> I'll get there you know yeah. I've got a trainer and I'm, I'm up in the 130s starting to crack 140 on the trainer so I'll get there you know good time good. time and dedication perseverance yeah. so yeah. something interesting I heard when I was watching your YouTube videos and if you don't know listeners hop on Jed's YouTube channel you've got over 3,000 videos and it's a range of anything from you just answering questions. You do these like 31 days of Q&A or, and that's, by the way, what inspired me to put it out there. Hey, anyone got any questions for Jed? And then you've also just got training videos. You've got your feats of strength. But then I learned something I never heard before. In one video about Thomas Inch, you mentioned that there was possibly people think he might have been cheating at times. There's a hole in it. What's that all yes. about? So I got that from an article that Nathan Hall, okay. I don't know how to pronounce it. If it's Holly or Hall, I don't know. It's H-O-L-L-E. -E. I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. He makes replicas. So yeah. He, he put it. Yes. Yeah. They're, they're great too. I got yeah. one of his, uh, I got the 104 kilogram from him uh, two Januarys ago. Okay. So I can't lift that. Yeah. I will, yeah. but I can't right now. Exactly. Um, and he, in that article, this is, this is going back, man. This is probably like 04. And he talked about the original having a hole in it. And people weren't sure what it was. The speculation was that Inch might have worn a wrist uh, brace of some mm -hmm. sort with a spike, like a nail that was okay. inserted that he could drive into the hole of the inch. And then that would totally remove any risk of rotation. Like you were talking about the weak point. That's right. That's right. So like, okay. It, most people, mm -hmm. I, I think most people that fail at the inch would be able to pick it up. No problem. If they could, you know, insert that spike in the inside. So, yeah. I, I've never heard that before. And I found that fascinating. Yeah. And I mean, old time strong men were, rife with you know it's a show it's Dude, a performance it's, it's all so, kinds of you know smoke and mirrors and yeah you know, kind of that, uh, that kind of stuff drives me insane yep yeah. that's that's why I'm, I'm always like show me the video when people yeah. tell me they do something mm -hmm. i'm like you got to show me a video of this well um, something i learned for example with uh your book lift the blob one of the things at a certain point you have uh, in your eight week program for lift the blob is uh, basically an assisted lift, but then a hold at the top. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, well, if I really wanted to be like some kind of con man, I could just take a picture of me holding this thing. Exactly. Here. And no exactly. one would know that I used my other hand to get it to this point because I was yep. kind of surprised that with the full blob, even though I could even only lift a half 80 with the half 100 with the full fat man it's like oh i'm getting like three or four seconds holding this thing up here like that's enough yeah. to take a picture so yeah. yeah i didn't do that i'm very truthful i put a video <laughs> <laughs> yeah. out there good man good man <laughs> but it just kind of resonated with me of some of the like you know this is a time and era where there's barely any photographs let alone mm -hmm. no videos at all yeah so who knows well there's a video from british path that mm -hmm. is on YouTube that you can find of Thomas Inch lifting what's called the unliftable Thomas Inch dumbbell. Mm -hmm. And it's not even the inch dumbbell. It's like some other dumbbell. And yeah. people think that that is the inch dumbbell. 
that's the one yeah and that's that's the biggest work that i've ever seen like he has people come up and test it like they don't even try to lift it <laughs> and then he like cleans it to his shoulder no problem he might continental it. i can't remember yeah and then he bent presses it with with no effort whatsoever like no strain it, it's like it's like a hollow shot loadable dumbbell now and that's i mean in the development of dumbbells i did a whole history of dumbbell episode you know there's a big difference between the shot loaded versus the solid cast iron yes one last thing about thomas inch that i learned that i found fascinating because i'm a huge star wars fan so the guy that played darth vader at one point owned like the thomas inch dumbo not a rep that's right what, yep, no, yep. i mean i know he was a huge dude that's why he had the role of darth vader was right. that just why because he was a big guy and he had big grip strengths you have any idea why in the world he bought that he was British. Yeah. So he just respected so, it. Yeah. He, he may have. Yeah. He may have known the family. I, I really yeah, don't know. Knows. I know. I know Kim and John Wood own it now. It's, okay. in, it's in Michigan. Um, David Prouse was that that gentleman's name. Yes. Thank you. David yep. Prouse. Yep. So uh, John Wood, old time strongman dot com. He was. That um, that's John Wood. Yep. Yeah. Kim okay. Wood. That's the guy. Was, I'm thinking of. Okay. In the in the seventies and eighties, I believe Kim Wood was the strength coach for the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh. And uh, he he got to know a lot of the, the the that current time performing strongmen, mm. as well as a lot of celebrities, um, all, all kinds of people. So he somehow had an in to get a yeah. hold of that uh, dumbbell. Jeez. That's quite a piece of history sitting <laughs> sitting in yeah. your house. Well, I said I'd come to Blobs eventually. Very recently, just a couple of weeks ago, World's Strongest Man. It was Brian Shaw's last World's Strongest Man. He's always been one of my favorites, four-time champ. Um, supposedly, the only person that has lifted a heavier blob than you, half of a round head dumbbell, is Brian Shaw. Is that correct? To lock out, yes. To lockout, a full deadlift, yes. if you will, for listeners that are unaware. To lockout. That's that's right. So okay. Jesse Pinnonen, okay. which that name looks like Jesse Pinnonen. All right. Finish name. Um, he has broken the 140, the half 145 off the ground several times. I mm -hmm. don't know for a fact that he's lifted it. Okay. You know, to lockout. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, I'm sure, you know, I think he's... right now he's more focused on strongman Mm -hmm. uh, sport and arm wrestling so he's not doing as much grip competitions right now or feats so he's probably just not training it right now so shaw's done 145 legacy dumbbells go up to 150 and That's they right. were the reissued round heads so shaw's done 145 150 you've done a full lockout with the blob father it's nicknamed yes. 140 yes. legacy did Half you come up with that nickname no the, so the Right now, when there's a new block weight established, the person that lifts it first gets to name it, right? Ah, okay. But it wasn't always that way. I don't know. I don't know when that started. Mm. But um, the blob father was named by one of the guys that sent it to me, Nate Browse. Gotcha. Um, and he came up with that name. So I don't know where that. I don't know where that custom came from because it wasn't always like that. Like, mm -hmm. like um, one dude was the first guy, Sean Dockery. He he cut a one fifteen in half, a hex one fifteen, mm -hmm. and this thing was extremely hard to lift. It took me forever to lift it, but they they named it right away the Impossible. Out. They didn't think anybody would ever lift it. Gotcha. Um, and you know, at this point, after so many years, I can I can do one in each hand. Yeah, but it's particularly hard because most hexes, the slope angles like this. So you uh -huh. have the flat, the flat part on top, and then your slope angles here. This one is not like that. It's like this, and it's very, very long. It's very long. So the profile is completely different. It's very, yeah. very hard to get your thumb over that that angle, and and get a good grip on it. Very tough. Well, this is a good point to throw in another one of my questions from Instagram. This comes from listener Mark at Marco B42. Jed, what are your thoughts on the difficulties between the different blob generations? 
Like the, what's more or less difficult? What do you find uh, the differences are in them? Okay, so the to go, I don't know how much detail you want me to go into, but basically. Let's do like a, a summary. I'm sure okay. you have full YouTube. Actually, I'm yeah. 100% sure you have full YouTube videos on this, but yeah, quick summary. Yeah. So there's an easier way to lift every blob because one side is slightly flatter. Okay. So that side should be on, uh, your thumb should be on that side. Okay. Okay. So if you have a half 100 fat man, blue blob or next gen, and you lift it, if you attempt to lift it with your thumb on the easier side, all of those blobs are tougher to lift than a half 100 legacy. Interesting. Okay. Now, if you flip that thing around and you put your thumb on the harder side, mm -hmm. then it's a totally different story. Because basically, if you look at a legacy, one side is like this and one side is like this. Sure. Okay. So if you put your thumb on the straighter side, mm -hmm. it's, it's not, not a big problem. If you turn it around so that it's like this and put your thumb on that more slope side, it, it give you a big headache. Yeah. And that's one of my blob lift videos. You actually dropped a comment saying, uh, switch the direction of it. Cause I had my fingers, it was a pre USA blob and I had my fingers on, let's see, how should I say this? I didn't have my fingers on the cut side. Put it right, that way. right. Right. So I, I and that's the it, kind of stuff. I was making it harder on myself than I had to. Yes, exactly. After watching a million blob videos, <laughs> I, I see that right away. Like in, in medleys, people go to lift a blob. I know right away whether they've trained blobs or not because they'll have it backwards most of the time half yeah. those dudes that have done brian shaw's blob medley are trying to lift those backwards yeah. so they're, ma they're making it even harder on themselves I, I mean technique having listened to a lot of your videos and having looked into some of your ebooks one takeaway i have is that technique's a big factor with grippers with blobs yeah. with so much of grip strength and i mean you could say yeah. that about anything olympic lifting power <laughs> lifting technique matters yes so then getting back into grip strength um organizations we're not mm -hmm. always around just like we we're talking about old strong men old time strong men there wasn't world's strongest man there wasn't giants live there weren't these competitions same thing with grip. There wasn't really a competition until fairly recently. So what's the brief history of like grip organizations that exist? You know, what's the current state of grip organizations? I know you're involved with grip sport, correctly. Yes. Correct. So Correct. I started, I started North American grips, North American grip sport in, I believe like October of 2011. Um, and then that continued until maybe 2018. And then we switched the name to grip sport international because we were having multiple contests, you know, that were worldwide, you know, mm. in England, Australia, Germany, we were having contests all over the world. So it really didn't make any sense to have North American grip sport as the name. Yeah. So we switched that. Uh, so that's, that's what we operate as now. The website is grip sport, int.com. Okay. Uh, but uh, grip sport.org is still up but it's like an archaic website. Like it's not even worth going. I would just go to gripsportint.com. Gotcha. And then on your YouTube channel in 2020, you had said about grip sport that you hope to have more state level and regional level uh, sanctioned competitions that would be feeders into the national competition you were just referring yeah. to earlier on the episode. You know, it's been yeah. a couple of years. Is that blossoming? Is that happening? What's so the current state that, of things? It's kind of it's kind of been in limbo for a couple of years due to COVID. Yeah. So in 2020, we were supposed to have a North American championship in Canada. Because I had I had held it, I think three or four years prior to that. So Eric Hussein was going to take that over. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was so I was talking about that then. What we wanted to do was we wanted to kind of reset everything after the next north americans okay and then once and because that couldn't happen due to covid that kind of never took place yeah so what i started doing instead is uh i was i started running the united states championship again because mm -hmm. i hadn't run that i hadn't run a contest of that name since 
2011, something like that. It switched over to the uh, North American Championship. Okay. So now we're actually back into talking about that. I just had a call with Eric last week. So hopefully those things will get initiated now. Cool. But there's always been there's always been the the feeder structure for nationals mm -hmm. because one of the ways that you can qualify for nationals is by finishing in the top third of your division in a competition. So if you do that, you're able to you're qualified for for nationals. In a does it have to be like a grip sport sanctioned competition of some type? Yes. Like what qualifies? It's it's got to be okay. grip sport sanctioned. Okay. So um, top tier sanctioning would be you would use you know established equipment. You would use either uh, calibrated uh, scale calibrated weights or uh, competition plates. Um, you would limit it to four attempts in a rising bar competition, or you can do what's called last man standing. Either of those are fine. Um, and if that's the case, then, you know, that's, that's one way to go about it. If the person is not able or willing to get all of their plates made and they are weighed, I should say weighed, because you can yeah. take them in, uh, to like a post office or someplace with a certified scale and mm -hmm. actually register what the exact weight is of each plate on that scale. It's a non-partial um, witness, basically. Correct. Yeah. Um, if they can't do that, then you can still sanction your contest. You can still qualify for nationals. It's just that the lists don't get entered into our database. Gotcha. Um, we also sanction steel bending competitions. Uh -huh. So as long as they pay the the sanctioning fee, they can mm -hmm. they can be considered sanctioned and the guys that do the bending competitions are very knowledgeable. Everything's fair, everything's structured. And, you know, so that the top finishers would then be able to qualify for nationals through, through, uh, through that means as well. Well, speaking of steel bending, I had mentioned Chaz from Stranger Grip on yeah. Instagram earlier. He wants to know, you used to be like, you know, really, really good at steel bending, but then you yep. stopped, it seems. Are you ever tempted? You ever get the urge to get back into steel bending? I'm tempted and urged all the time. Yeah. Like, I I coach. I have I have a guy, one guy right now, and I've coached a bunch of people that um were training for the red nail and things right. along those lines. Um and sometimes I think if I could just like bust out like a top level bar. I could show them better. Mm -hmm. But the thing is my body, I just, I can't recover from everything that I do. Yeah. So, because like a lot of people don't realize I train six days a week, three body days and three grip days. So mm -hmm. to throw steel bending back in, it, back in there, I think would be, I just wouldn't be able to do everything else that I want to do at the intensity level that I want to do it. But yeah, back in the day I was, I would, I would finish very well in a, in an open bending competition. So an open bending competition would be like, um, you could use whatever technique you wanted to, mm. whatever, uh, however many wraps, the thickness and stuff. So you could, you yeah. didn't have to do reverse. You could do double overhand, whatever you wanted to do. But when it came to reverse bending, I generally would win that event. Mm. Um, I was just, just gifted. I that guess. Was, that was the way. Yeah. Well, yeah. to, you know, as the call back to earlier in the episode, you said what your downfall with strongman was not really being too knowledgeable on recovery. So it seems like you learned, yeah. you learned over the years that, yeah, you know, you got to pick your lane and figure out what you're yeah, doing. I mean, dude, I'd be up, I'd be up till 11, 12 at night. I got, I'd get up at like six, seven in the morning. Um, I ate like crap. Yeah. Like I, I, it, the way that I eat now, I, I, I could probably recover better, but my sleep is absolutely pathetic. Like I try to, I'm in bed eight hours, but like, I can't sleep. Like I have, I have sleep apnea. I use a CPAP, all that jazz, but like, I can't, once I wake up, I'm either hot or cold. It's like, I got cold flashes, like a premenopausal woman or some something, you know? So, so that's the biggest hurdle with recovery these days. It's the biggest hurdle, dude. To this day, yeah. it's 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 one of the biggest things. The diet is on point. Yeah. Uh, water intake. Um, I just started taking uh, AG1, which I thought was Athletic Greens, but yeah, yeah. 
there's another product out there called athletic greens. I don't know how that's possible, but, um, so yeah, the recovery would be the factor. Gotcha. I've so done then, my damage, dude. I've yeah. done my damage. You know what I mean? They, yeah, it's I time for you. these other guys to catch up. When I'll tell you what, when someone can beat me in reverse, then yeah. I'll come back to bending. No, I'll just You'll come back. That's nice. That's, that's, You're laying down the happen. gauntlet. It's like so, arm wrestling. It ain't going to happen. Well, in terms of getting better sleep and things like that, coming back to organizations, you started out with a committee for grip sport, yeah. but then it got whittled down to you and Eric were saying you mentioned yeah. earlier. Um, any any ideas on going back to more of a committee structure to branch out to some of the things you were mentioning before, growing feeder system, things like that? Uh, because I see from a fairly new perspective, I've only been into grip a short while here. Mm. I mean, there are some really, like you said about, I think it was Rick Walker, that it, he yeah. just wrote so passionately about grip. Some of the guys I've become friends with online on Instagram, especially, are so into grip that I'm like, some of these guys got to be able to help you out. You. Dude, I've asked some a half dozen seeds. times. I've I've asked a half dozen times for help on the organization. Get like one person that'll say they'll help. Um, you know, I had a podcast for a while. Yeah, tried to get that going. Nobody wants to help. So like, I just I'll just won't do the podcast and just yeah. stick with what's going on right now with Grip. But um, you know, just because there isn't a formal committee, that's not to say that I don't have people that I reach out to and sure get get information from. And I try to be diplomatic about stuff. Like I run a poll every year to see who will hold uh, the national championship. I saw that. Yeah. Yep. And uh, you know, it just a big part of a poll is the events, and people choose events that people don't like, and people aren't gonna vote for those events yeah so well i mean that makes sense to me and one of the hardest things for me to figure out when i wanted to make the shift from grip just being something fun after training that i mess around with to like i want to focus on grip i want to try to get competitive was mm -hmm. how do you do that like what are these organizations so grip sport recently on garage gym experiment which is the podcast network that i'm on garage gym radio it's their primary show Mm -hmm. um even though i like to think my show is the primary show <laughs> but recently on there uh ricardo from arm lifting usa was on there talking about his organization those are the only two organizations i pretty much can find would be yours and his what's the difference between grip sport and like the events that happen in arm lifting usa that he described so there's way more events in grip sport than arm lifting uh-huh arm lifting is has historically been built around thick bar and grippers at first. And it seems like they're going away from the grippers. Like I rarely see a, uh, it used to be a lot of silver bullet, like no closing, oh, okay. just silver bullet. Interesting. And I haven't seen, I haven't seen a contest run by the principles of mm -hmm. arm lifting USA with silver bullet in it for quite some time. And for those that don't know, silver bullet <laughs> is when you grip the silver bullet product from iron mine in between a gripper, right? For time. Yeah. That's right. Yep. And it's got a, it doesn't have some type of weight on it. I've never done it. I'm just going off of what I've seen. Yeah. So the silver bullet is essentially, it looks like they, they hacksawed a piece of a, a gripper off. Okay. So it's, it's about this big. If a, if a regular gripper is this, the handles this long, it's about half the handle. And then you smush that in between the handles and hold it. And then off the silver bullet is there you go. There's a, there's a COC. All right, so and, here's a COC. Uh, so then this bottom portion here is what Jed's talking yep. about, would be yep. like a silver bullet. And then you'd pinch it in between yep. and try to hold for time. Yep, and it's uh, it's two and a half kilos is the weight that's held. Oh, okay. So it's a standard weight yep. for the event. Yes. Cool. I'm going to have to give it a try. But the, so the, the main the main difference is that the variety of the, vari the variety of events. Okay. So you know, I I give complete autonomy to the promoters that want to run a mm -hmm. competition. They can do whatever they want to. Um, it's just we don't track every event, especially if it's like a one-off piece. You know. Yeah. Oh, this is this is a cool thing we have in our gym, and we're going to pick it up and hold it. Well, we don't gotcha. we don't track those kinds of things. But out of the you know the other fifty events that are out there. They they may get they may get tracked. What are some of the most frequent events for grip sport? 
um, gripper closing. So a max, an actual max gripper with a with a set block. So you you can set it to whatever depth you want to, but before you close it, you have to pass a twenty millimeter block between the handles, okay. and then you close it down. Um, then there's generally a, a pinching event. Mm -hmm. So historically, the two hand pinch with the adjustable euro device was used. Um, that kind of got phased out and replaced by the flask. Oh, okay. Um, Barrel strength uh, system. So, yeah. Yep. And then um, in recent years, there's been more Saxon bar use and more uh, Napalm Nightmare uh, pinch pinch devices used. Yeah. Um, and then there's generally a thick bar event. So um, the one that everybody knows is Rolling Thunder. It's the worst rolling implement on the market. Um, but you know, these days a lot of crushers are used, which is from Fat Bastard Barbell Company. Um, oh. one hand nightmare. There you go. There's a there's a crusher. Is that the 2.25? It is, yeah. So this is a 2.25 crusher. What Jed's talking about is a solid, uh, well, almost solid. It has a rod going through it to spin. But what's the main difference between this and a rolling thunder? I mean, they're set up the same that you have a yeah. loading pin, you clip it on, and then you grip it. That's but correct. This is solid steel yeah. uh, that I'm gripping whenever I put my hand on here. What's Rolling Thunder? Rolling Thunder is a plastic piece that um, you would grip onto. Mm -hmm. And then that rolls around what I, th I think is a another plastic piece. Okay. So it, it causes a rolling action, but it's, it's not nearly as severe or aggressive compared to a... Um, a, a rolling handle like you have there and i mean i'd assume too that the way this is seasoning and picking up chalk that that's not going to happen as easily on a rolling thunder is that i don't have a rolling thunder so i don't know if you if you know how to chalk you can chalk a rolling thunder really okay. really nicely so that's not an um, issue yeah that's okay. i they they had implemented a rule where you couldn't chalk the device oh you know for for a while yeah um with the rolling thunder in the arm lifting okay. positions. And gotcha. I think they've pretty much just done away with that handle and it's been yeah. replaced by the uh the one hand country crush, which is called a raptor. The raptor. Yeah. But that's different than the crusher as well. It's it's uh it's it's different because it's made out of uh like a high density plastic. Yeah. Instead of steel or iron. Yeah. Um, which unfortunately does not take chalk well at all. Yeah. So you literally go from an easy deadlift to it's stapled to the ground in I mean, a matter of uh, half a pound. One of my first grip forays into grip was just a DIY pinch block that I made with Same some here, two brother. by fours, you yep. know, yep. in a garage. Yep. But when I started getting metal implements, it just it's it turns a corner so and it's yeah. really not that expensive like you mentioned saxon bar i have an arm assassin mm -hmm. you have napalm nightmare this is an arm assassin pinch block that yeah. i don't even know off the top of my head but it's probably like 30 bucks is what it costs yeah. or less it's yeah. really not an exorbitant price to pick up one of these and it's a no great and that's adjustable you can take that eye bolt out and put it in the other hole and then you have an, another hole in exactly so i um what I'm getting at, though, is I keep mentioning it because it's one of my favorite books, Dinosaur Training. Brooks gets into a really cool piece where he's he's talking about um, just how this this almost like Carl, Carl Jung philosophical, like predetermined, like you, the way medieval soldiers would have iron swords and like touching iron and how, you know, if you're really going to work your grip, you need to grab iron. Yeah, and you need to grab metal. So, I, and that resonated with me because I I have a bunch of my grip implements here, just in case you brought up any of them. I, I, they're my favorite. I, I like the ones like the Crusher. That there's just something about that that mm -hmm. just feels yeah. better. So that's yeah. just my personal uh, two cents on it. So that's a big difference. Grip Sport has a variety of things going on. In terms of um, the home gym, I just mentioned my DIY. So to close this out, what I wanted to do, other than give you the rest of these uh, questions, some of them are a little more goofy <laughs> from Instagram, was yeah. home gym advice. So, yep. you know, 
you've had home gyms over the years. You said that on Instagram just yesterday, how you, you've got, you've had been in a basement gym, a garage gym, you name it. Yeah. When it comes to grip, if someone's been listening to this, now they're getting curious. We mentioned the plate pinch. I mentioned yep. an easy DIY. What else can they do in their home gym? Dude, I would go to the scrapyard and just look around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I did. Just go to the scrapyard and look around and you nice. can find stuff you can make into pinch blocks and vertical bars and all kinds of uh, pull up, you know, implements to do pull ups on. Um, we found something that we called a Smurf back in the day. I still don't know what this thing is. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, but it looks like a miniature blob. Um, so you'd, you'd put your hand on it and then there'd be there were these things that were sticking out. So we would like balance weights on there. Hmm. and then we just pick up more weight but dude we were we were driving one time and i was like stop the car and i jumped <laughs> out real quick there was like a like a four by four or something piece of lumber out on the side of the road and we yeah. would just bend down and pick that up and we'd have quarters stacked up on the on the sides of it so half the nice. time it would tip over before you could pick it up we didn't have no loading pins yeah. so um but uh, brake rotors, I used, I, used, I used a brake rotor with duct tape around the edge to train to lift the blob by the face. That is how nice. I accomplished the blob by the face. Interesting, um, because of the, the width of it. Yeah. Huh. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I would, cool. I would get out to the nearest scrapyard and get just creative. start poking around. Yep. Yep. Cool. So then on Instagram, I had a couple more questions for you. Uh, Another two-parter. This one comes from Zach Mullins, who likes to go by the Blob Zombie. <laughs> yep. First question. He'd like to hear about your job interview when you got lost and didn't know where to go. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. All right. Um, are there language limitations on this <laughs> on this interview? Have at it. Okay. So my first job out of college was at the local beef plant. And because I graduated, I have a Spanish degree. So oh, I can speak fluent Spanish. The first eight years of my professional career, my primary job was Spanish interpreter. Hmm. So I was, <clears throat> I was offered or an interview. I was granted an interview, whatever you say. So I go to the guardhouse. Now, this is a beef plant, dude. Okay. Have you ever been in a beef plant? I have not. Okay. No. So what I didn't realize, I don't know what I was thinking. But in a beef plant, like the first part of the process is you pick the cow upside down, hang it by one of the back legs, oh, and you gosh. stab it in the throat and bleed all the all the blood out of it. Oh, okay? my gosh. Um, and then it's like a reverse uh, assembly line. So, um, you know, oh, the hide off. Everyone has like a job that they're... Yes. Yeah. So gradually this cow is turned into... Yeah. You know blocks of meat right yeah there's blood everywhere blood everywhere i can only imagine but you know i want to make a good impression at this job interview and so i i got i had a suit i went to the front guard check i said hi i'm here to see your human resources for a job interview so they gave me the directions well dude a minute later a minute after they told me where the directions the directions get to the human resource office were i forgot them so I walk through the through the main hallway downstairs and I see some dude and I'm like, excuse me, sir, would you be able to tell me where human resources is? <laughs> now I'm fresh out of college. Actually, I wasn't done with college yet. I still had to finish some some courses to graduate. Um uh, anyway, I, I haven't had a lot of experience with people like this. Excuse me, sir. Could you tell me where human resources is? The guy looks at me, down, up, <laughs> down, up, and goes, who the fuck are you? And I'm like, <laughs> you know, oh, oil can. Like, yeah. I couldn't move my jaw. You, know? you couldn't have been more young and green and just yes, inexperienced yes. in your fresh new suit looking for a yes. job. So there was somebody else oh. in the office. It ended up being the cooler office. So like there's employees that work in the cooler. They they oh, wow. stage the, the carcasses between the kill floor and the Man. boning room because you need time to I can't cool imagine the carcasses that. down. 
That's yeah. like an episode of uh, Mike Rose's old show, Dirty Jobs. Like, goodness gracious. I, I always thought it would be great for him to go to one of those. And, yeah. Uh, but um, the other guy comes over, saves the day. He's like, what are you looking for? I said, human resources. <laughs> and he says, it's right at the top of the stairs. I was almost there. I didn't even <laughs> so know. close. So I go up in a, for a job interview in a, in a suit, tie, dress shoes, and little did I know the, the uniform for the employees on the kill floor was like a jumpsuit, a full body coveralls, sleeveless coveralls. Um, by the end of the day, most people were sweating through the thing. You could like see their underwear. Um, and I used to go out, dude, it never bothered me. I went out for a tour. Um, I used to work in, I used to stand in the blood pit, talk to the Hispanic employees, see how they were doing. Wow. I would, I, I wore dockers to, in a, in a polo most days. Yeah. That was my, that was my attire. I would be covered in blood, covered Jeez. in blood. It, it, it never, it, it never bothered me. But you still, you eat beef to this day? You're still not a. Oh yeah. I love it. Yeah. You're okay. Absolutely. You're not no, bothered by it. it didn't no way. No, it. it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the job interview story. Wow. That's, I mean, I knew I chose correctly to close out with this two-part question because I've had a feeling that Zach's first question was a good story, and it was. It didn't disappoint. And this is his last, his other part of his question, which I think would be a great way to end out. Okay. Uh, Zach Mullins on Instagram, he says, what do you think the community as a whole, meaning the grip community, yeah. needs to do to grow the sport and be taken more seriously? Okay. To grow the sport, we need more contest being run okay and i think people they just think they're they don't have what it takes to run a contest it's actually pretty easy to run a contest um i've gone overboard with competitions before and made it very very stressful for me but you know most of the time it's a very laid-back day um there's a few hours of organization to set up the the gym mm -hmm. but um for the most part it's pretty easy and i'll i do i'll do a call with people to help them out i do it all the yeah. time so we need more competitions and to be taken more seriously, kind of a, a two-parter people, people need to get stronger. So um, I think a, a, a large, a large portion of the grip community only trains grip. And unfortunately it's hard to take someone seriously as a strength athlete when they are, people already don't have any idea what they're doing with these implements. It means nothing to them because they've never seen these implements. Mm -hmm. But plus like, if you're, if you, if you go to a channel or a Instagram page and like half of it's, you know, grip that they don't know. And, and the other stuff is like really bad numbers on lifts that they do know. Yeah. It, you know, there's no, I don't know what the word would be, but there's no urgency to take this person seriously. But um, the other the other side of it is the stronger you get in your body, the stronger you you'll your grip will get, and the better you'll perform. So that's that's the point I try to get across to everybody that I can is you must try to get stronger. You must do at least bench press and squat, if not deadlift, um, because I mean powerlifting is the most basic form of strength training that there is and um you know it's it would be it would just benefit so many people to get stronger and bring up their like i see people and i don't know how there's not an injury every single contest yeah from some of these guys' forms it's just it's just so bad you can just well, like you, you just said, tell they don't know right now you're training you do three days body three days grip so yeah. you're training you know i assume with what you just named yeah. the main lifts things of that sort and then the next day you do your grip yep so yep. i mean it used to be that i would do me. used to be i would do the the workouts combined mm -hmm. and that actually worked well i'm not gonna say it didn't but that's this what i'm doing right works now better for me. i basically like i mentioned earlier i i used to just grip with something fun if i had time at the end of training and then the first thing I did about two months ago was I, I thought, well, I always skip it because I run out of time. If I want to prioritize yeah. it, I got to do it earlier in my training. So, so I what it, I used to do was I, I would like pair. Yeah, yeah. I, so. If that's working for you, keep doing it. 
for now, but uh, because it's finally gotten me consistently training grip. Yeah. But now I'm realizing, oh, wait, like I, I need, like you said, recovery. Like I'm not doing this in the best way. Like I need to, you know, think about, okay, I'm doing thick handle today. Now I'm going to do this, uh, yeah. whatever it might be pinch grip the next day. So yeah. yeah, I'm starting to realize that. Like I said, I'm early on here. <laughs> you know, well, don't listen, if, don't if criticize need, too much. <laughs> yeah, no, if you ever need help setting up a program, let me know. Cause that's something yeah. that I do. Um, but I can tell you something that I used to do is on my squat days, I would train grippers. Okay. So, um, and there's a reason for that. Well, two reasons. Uh, it, it always seemed to me like the nervous system was much more, much more primed. Hmm. So I would squat and then it would be left and right hand grippers. Huh. And that's the strongest I ever was on grippers. So like I've actually been considering going back to it. Finish uh, squatting completely, then grippers? Or are you talking about nope. grippers in between sets? Set one of squats, set set one of grippers. Oh, set two of squats, set two of grippers. Yep. Yep. I've got I also, start. yep. And then uh, around contest time, I would also do a uh, bench with grippers. Or I would do... It was whatever I need to work on the most or the thing that I was trying to perform the best at. So a lot of times I would do my two hand pinch yeah. with one of those multi-joint exercises. Interesting. Um, and that, that'll, that helped me uh, break the record in two hand pinch five different times. So hmm. um, one of my major two hand pinch workouts would be in tandem with one of those other lifts. So hmm. that's something that people can try yeah, to try and, to pair uh, up. The grippers won't take anything away from your from your squat. The, yeah. The, what you can't do is deadlift in the grippers. That's, yeah. It's not going to work. I tr I tried it, um, like maybe once with grippers, and obviously your hands are already fried. Um, but it it does work pretty decent with uh with thick bar for me. Well, um, other than warming up for heavy, just regular power bar deadlift bar, heavy deadlifts with a Saxon bar or with a uh, axle a deadlift day is probably the hardest day for me to figure out grip because mm -hmm. like you said it's yeah, plus deadlift heavy deadlifts just take it take it out of me so yeah once i'm done with them i'm what I'm we done. just started doing is we just we just went full on into conjugate power lifting yeah so we're we're incorporating max effort and dynamic effort days uh together yeah. So, yeah. and they say you're not supposed to do that. So I need to, I need to say that right now for anybody that's listening, but we do. So tonight was max effort squat and dynamic effort deadlift. And then um, Monday of next week will be max effort deadlift and dynamic effort, effort squat. And then we do the same thing with bench press and uh, overhead press as well. So that's, I mean, I feel, I, I feel really good about my, my current, training cycle um it's it's really for the body i feel like i'm firing on all cylinders and already after like three weeks i'm um, seeing really good results so so you're saying jason uh denji better watch out yeah um you know <laughs> you're getting ready he's got those uh those those little girl knees yeah um and i don't think he likes to test them of course it's pretty hard to squat when you're sitting on your love seat so, you know. Oh man! Right. Yeah. You know, oh, you you've got the you say brother a lot. Yeah. Uh, you got the you got the uh, past. That's where you got your nickname, Napalm. Yeah. I heard on you answer on your YouTube because you made a kind of applicant video for the Tough Enough. WWF, WWF. Tough Enough. Yeah, yep. man. Nineteen ninety nine. You're not lacking on the trash talk either. You're ready. It's not no, too late. Dude, I can, I can cut a scathing <laughs> promo when, whenever yeah. I want to. Yeah, you're ready. Um, the problem is Maybe. I don't know when to draw the line, and I don't want to I don't want to upset somebody too bad. You know maybe, I mean? that's, uh, maybe that's how we popularize the sport a little more. We get some rivalries. We need a heal. We need a no, – we need I'm a, the all, heel. All, we I'm need the heel. All American grip athlete. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So. All white meat baby face yeah we got exactly uh, so, you know zach and i can be a tag team we'll be the heels 
Um, <laughs> That'll fix. The other, the other, the other thing that we got to do with grip is we got to cut out this bracing. Yeah. In so many videos with like, I saw the one picture handle. you shared of like oh. a magazine cover. Yes. Of someone. I mean, even I could even see like, oh wow, he's like bracing. For those that don't know, basically means that almost. Well, actually, it's lift a blob it's one of the things you do for the purpose of building the strength is that you hold it against you well that's a purposeful for building getting your hand used to yes the blob but doing that in a competition is cheating so exactly yes you know it's yeah so that's bracing is if you're putting the implement against you right that's right. That's right. Okay. Bracing or pinning. It's mm-hmm. it's both the same thing. And your other um, hand too. I had to break a bad habit. I especially for some reason the crusher. I just kind of subconsciously I put my forearm on my thigh with my free hand. You're totally realized, allowed to do that. Are you allowed sport. to do that? At, okay. Yes. Yes. Right. Otherwise, you end up with your hand like, like like in a weird position. Like it's it's just not good for pictures either. Okay. Um <laughs> yeah, I've seen some weird, some weird stuff, yeah. man, you want, with that offhand. And you put want to that thing on your leg. So maybe like being a catcher in baseball, I could just put it behind my back. Like you just don't see it. It won't be as yeah. awkward. Yeah, there you go. There, um, a baseball might fly your way, man. Yeah, you don't know what's That's, gonna happen when you're training. That'll be, be ready for cutter. anything. Yeah, I <laughs> Jason doesn't realize all the booby traps that I have set up at his house. When Gosh. when uh, Chad Woodall came to my, he's a he's the best grip stuff grip guy in the United States, mm-hmm. basically uh, American United States. Um, he just doesn't compete anymore. Um, and the story was I booby trapped my basketball hoop back in the day. So okay. after the contest, we come back to my house to do feats of strength. And he starts talking about all these thunderous dunks that he threw down when he was in college. And I was like, perfect. I, I just got done telling him that there was a wind storm like the week before and it blew over my basketball hoop. Because the basketball hoop has a, a base at the bottom. Yeah. It's supposed to be filled with water so it won't sure. tip over. But it wasn't. That's the kind I have in my driveway for my kids. Yeah. 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 So, so mine Chad, has water in it. <laughs> yeah. Chad grabs a basketball, oh. power, power dribble, two hand slam hangs on the rim. And before you know it, he's falling on the concrete, oh. just about breaking his arm. So, the story was I booby trapped my booby basketball trapped. hoop to take him out. And I'm like, why would I do that after the contest? <laughs> oh man. I or mean, maybe what I the, did. One of the questions I skipped over, you're kind of answering, I, I skipped over it, but uh, you know, who, who in your opinion do you respect or you, you think is one of the names that should be known in grip that is no longer competing. So Chad Woodall, you just said. Definitely no Chad competing. Woodall. Definitely um, Andrew Derniat. Andrew Derniat, Andrew Derniat yeah. to this day will come to a contest here or there and he'll finish top three and he never trains grip wow. and he'll do over well over 400 pounds on an axle. Andrew Derniat is the reason that the napalms nightmare exists to this day. Oh, yeah. um, I was trying to figure out a way to catch up to him in grip and his history so when i met him first in 2007 2008 he was a kettlebell sport competitor okay so are you familiar that involves a lot of grip yeah so you either do one kettlebell and you clean and jerk and then you Mm -hmm. clean and jerk and it's like 10 minutes or you do two kettlebells clean and jerk so and there's also snatch but there's a lot of dynamic eccentric loading right so it comes from the top position and then you come it comes back down um to the bottom position that's it, that's a tremendous amount of eccentric loading so i figured that part of his prowess might be from that dynamic eccentric loading makes sense so i, I but i was not interested in doing kettlebell sport or kettlebells <laughs> for that matter yeah. instead what i came up with was a two-handed rolling handle that i could train swings with Oh, okay. So um, I would be down there doing swings with 180 pounds on the Napalm's Nightmare. Um, It it was never intended to be a competition device until uh, Luke started his arm assassin company. And I was like, why don't you make Napalm's Nightmares, man? And he started making them out of metal. Prior to then, 
It was they were made out of PVC, and there were only gotcha. like ten of them in existence. So Andrew Dernia is is so, the whole cause of that. Now I know when it comes in. Uh, let's see, I think Luke's on vacation this week, but when it comes in in a week or two, now I know the history on it. I just bought an Apom Nightmare last week. Well, thank I, you uh, very much for your purchase. Yeah, man. If people don't know, uh, Arm Assassin Strength Shop is one of my favorite companies. They're right here in Pennsylvania, just like I am in Pittsburgh, and Jed's on the other side of the state. And you're friends with Luke, longtime friends, yep. correct? Yep. And yep. Um, he's a, a staff, like very accomplished arm wrestler. Um, Both. I, yeah. I mean, I he's, he won, he won nationals in 2018. He was there the, North, uh, sorry, North. He was North American champion in 2018. So no stranger to any of the implements and any of the tools that he makes. And it's a small company. And it's right here in Pennsylvania, made in the USA. It doesn't get better than that. So I've purchased several things from him, and uh, yeah, never great, been great company, great turnaround, great prices. Absolutely. He doesn't try to, you know, gouge you. No. Um, I think he's only raised his prices on implements one time, and that was uh, like during COVID. I think when the prices went up uh, so high on importing steel, um, easily. I mean. A month into training with him, he was the best grip partner that I ever had. The dude is so smart. Like, he's like yeah. a semester short of being a doctorate. Wow. So he's extremely brilliant. Yeah. He well, taught himself welding. That's, I mean, for someone who does it for a living now, that says yeah. a lot. Because I've seen yeah. a lot of bad welds in my day, and I haven't seen any <laughs> from Armour Session. That's nope. for sure. Nope. But then your products, uh, you mentioned how you had a book on card tearing, how various DVDs you had. I mentioned a couple of times the Lift the Blob ebook that I have. And then you mentioned coaching too, when you're talking about programming, things like that. Where yes. do people go if they want to find all these things or, you know, get in contact with you? What's, where can they find you? So my main website is dieselcrew.com mm -hmm. and you can find stuff there. But what I would suggest is for people to go to my Instagram, jed.diesel and go to okay. my link tree on my bio. It's Perfect. got not all, but almost all of my products, as well as my membership site called thegripauthority.com, which I'm getting updated. It hasn't been updated since 2009. What I mean okay. is the formatting of the page has not been updated since updated. 2009. Gotcha. Yeah, it's getting, it's going to get brought into the, um, yeah. you know, the, the 2010s at least, not, nice. the, not the 2020s, <laughs> but um, yeah, there's, there's about a thousand posts on there too that are all instructional uh, features yeah. for grip training, grip sport, grip feats, all that stuff. Strongman sport, powerlifting, uh, kettlebells. It's it's all on there. Whatever I was passionate about at the time, I would do a feature on. Uh, but yeah, I have I have products on just about every top feat of strength that's out there, except for like coin bending and single yeah. finger <laughs> yeah the stuff that you said was really dangerous you're yeah. not going to instruct yeah. people how to do that yeah. probably makes sense for your own liability reasons and i don't want to see anybody get hurt man exactly. like this is stuff that is like part of my life like yeah if i if i couldn't train grip my life quality would go downhill like severely i've gotten so into grip i don't strength. want that to happen because it's fun. I like the yeah. variety of it. And I just think it's fun. And if I get hurt, then I can't do the fun thing I like to do. So all I really yeah. ever wanted to do is rip a deck of cards. Yeah. And look where if you I are. was at the bar, I could say I can rip a deck of cards. Yeah. And then someone grab a deck of cards and I'd rip it. That's all I wanted to be able to do. Yeah. But it just it just became this um never ending barrage of 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 feats that you could try to do. And I just made it a goal to do all kinds of them and ended up doing them. But, uh, you know, some people are down on grip sport because there's such a variety, you know, like it gives you a plenty of challenges to do. You're never done. And um, there's no saying you have to go out and buy all that stuff. Like when the new pieces of equipment come out, people just run and buy it. And yeah. like, I know it's just at their houses collecting dust. Wow. And they probably have like five different rolling handles. Exactly. Like you don't need that. You don't need that. But grip, to my knowledge, and please you know, correct me, it's, even though there's whatever, hundreds of different implements, it comes down to like, you know, thick handle, pinch, um, crushing. Yep. And am I forgetting something? And you could call usually, thick handle supporting, but yep. yeah. And, and usually a vertical. Grip vertical, there you go. Sort. 
Yeah, yep, a vertical like a grip. Yeah. Yep. Hill, um, vertical bar, little big horn, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Something like that. Lumped into that category. Because um, to put a plug into somewhere I'll be, I'm going to be going to heavy hands competition that Zach Mullins, who I mentioned earlier, is putting on with Ben Helms in uh, Virginia, September 8th. And the first thing I thought was like, ah, oh, crap, what do I have to buy to like train for this thing? And Zach right away was like, nope, what do you got here? Just use this and you'll be yep. fine. Or here, put your fat grips on this and do this. And okay, there you go. Yeah, so, between, yeah. between now and September, you could probably set up a weekend trip to go to someone's house and test out like the Andrew's axle. Yeah. And um, then you'll know where you're at. dude. At least, you know, your opener, you know sure. what I mean? Like, uh, and then you can, you can prepare as far as conditioning perfectly well with just, uh, an, uh, iron or steel rolling handle, um, uh, uh, some kind of pinch implement that matches the size that you've got to lift on in the competition. So like, I'm glad you bought the napalm's nightmare because essentially you don't need a Saxon bar now. You don't yeah. need a two by five. You don't need a three by three, three by four, whatever the sizes mm -hmm. are, because we have handles for all that stuff. Yeah. So you can condition your hands for that perfectly fine with the, with the napalm's nightmare. You're, you're in good shape, dude. I hope so. I mean, I, I'm taking an attitude of, Hey, I'm new at this. I'm just going to go have fun and, and learn because as a home gym owner, I'm usually by myself training. Well, I have my kids bopping around and, I've got little tiny weights that they lift, but uh, yep. yeah, it'll be a chance for me to learn from some people more experienced than me and just kind of figure out how it works. So yeah. please, you know, I'll drop links for just about everything we mentioned down in the description. So all Jed's stuff will be down there. Listeners, I appreciate you tuning in because I got some really good questions. Thanks to all those that put in questions. I didn't get to a couple of them, but I did see them and I appreciate them. And Go to Apple, Spotify, YouTube. The best way to support the show is to just follow, subscribe, like, comment, do all that stuff that, like Jed said at the top of the show, supports the algorithm. That's what I always try to do online. So please return the favor if you like our show and do that. Thank you so much, Jed. I appreciate it. Yeah, if, uh, if you don't care, I'll, I'll make your um, listeners a special offer. Oh, please do. Um, anybody that is a listener to this show. If they reach out to me and say they watch this show, I will give them half off at the grip authority.com. Man. Nice. So half off at grip authority. That is a substantial discount everybody. Yep. So yeah, all you got to do is let them know home gym history. So, and that, leave a comment on this video that helps, yeah. that helps there the content go. producer tremendously. It does. Leave a comment down below. It does indeed. So, Hey, Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you soon with a new episode. Thanks a lot, Jed. Thank you.